Trustee Peck? Trustee Rasich? Here. Trustee Wajowski? Here. Trustee Benucci? Here. Mayor Collins? Here. If you could rise for the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag Presidential comments. I only have one is uh, Happy New Year to uh, those in attendance and viewing audience. Trustees' comments. Looks like this space say a special thank you to the employees that worked over the holidays and spent time working for the village and um, in lieu of time with their families. Are there any other trustee comments? Um, I'd just like to offer condolences to the family of Terry Burkos. Uh, Terry was a member of Pima, and he was a, a very nice man, and he passed away this weekend. So condolences to his family. Are there any other trustee comments? Not this will be time for public comments. There are no public comments and we'll proceed with the business meeting. We're seeking a motion to amend the agenda to remove the first item under the management services report, the Dell servers. So move. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to amend the agenda. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wachowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. We're seeking a motion to approve the amended agenda. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. We're seeking a motion to approve the consent agenda to include minutes of the board meeting held on December 21st, bills paid and bills payable reports for January 4th, reduction of Subdivision Improvement Performance Bond for Somerset at Grand Park from $268,876.88 to $152,714 pursuant to the request by K. Hovanian Development of Illinois and as recommended for approval by Village staff. I move to uh, approve the consent agenda A, B, and C as uh, read. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve items A through C under the consent agenda. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is text amendments to Chapter 2.5 of the Municipal Code. We're seeking a motion to open a public hearing to consider a text amendment to modify Chapter 2.5 of the Municipal Code by adopting the 2015 International Building Code with modifications. I move that we open the public hearing. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Uh, during the past few months, the building department team has been uh, reviewing the current articulation of the building code documents. Um, it was determined that there were several sections that were repetitive and were not clear. Some sections are in the 2015 International Code now, so those sections were deleted. We are hoping to move into the 2015 International Codes to be uh, competitive with other villages and for the quality of our uh, community keep up new um, techniques um, and new products that are coming out onto the market uh, as we speak. Uh, the permit fees were also reviewed also, um, at the same time. The permit fees are the same from before 2000. We did some research with neighboring communities and uh, we're raising our permit fees to be in line with other communities but still at the lower end of the permit fee range with the other communities. Um, I believe that this would be in the best interest of the community. So I would, I would ask for the board's approval for the proposed 2015 recapitulation of the building code to be approved. 
We need to conclude the public hearing first, so there's maybe a public comment coming up. Uh, Hi. Uh, good evening, uh, Village President, members of the uh, Village Board. My name is Gideon Bluestein, and uh, I represent the Three Rivers Association of Realtors. Uh, here locally, I know you have well over uh, 100 realtors uh, who are residents of Plainfield. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here tonight because I only knew about this public hearing earlier this afternoon. Um, that being said, I do want to call attention to a couple of items. Uh, the first being the section on sprinkler systems. I have an FAQ uh, that I would like to share with the Village Board. Again, if I'd had more time, I would have liked to have been able to share this prior uh, to tonight's meeting. Uh, I don't know what the best process is for trying to hand this out. Well, Gideon, I can answer the question uh, because the concern that you have is similar to the concern we have, and there is a carve out that we don't require sprinkler on residential units excellent I appreciate that I thought you'd um, like to hear that news the uh, the other aspect that I would uh, bring up is the amount of the building permits um, I haven't reviewed or had a chance to review what the specifics are that are included tonight I do know that from a prior meeting that I had had with uh, Michael Garrigan prior to his uh, moving up to Antioch he had mentioned that uh, the proposed uh, permit fees that were being discussed uh, as part of the business development plan uh, in conversations that he had had with developers that would actually price the lot uh, costs out of the market and so again I'm sorry to to come up and be somewhat misinformed or uninformed uh, but I did want to at least raise that uh, with this short notice with the public hearing well, and, and I can cover that as well. The uh, building permit fees for new construction aren't impacted by this. We still are being quite competitive in that regard. The fees that we adjusted are the, the, the smaller f uh, projects, uh, your fence permit, your, um, your miscellaneous permit fees, if you will. What we found is actually it cost us more to issue a permit than it, than it was to that we, what we were collecting off of the permit. Uh, decks, just for example, a uh, 3,000 square foot deck, uh, the total cost of permit fee to us was $12. So, um, you know, we, we've made some adjustments on in that regard. Understood. Thank you very much, then. That's, that's all I have. Yeah. We, we took what you had said before to, to heart, and uh, as you know, the mayor and I had met you uh, previously, too, and, and wanted to make sure that uh, uh, those were very important issues to, the, to us as well. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you uh, to all the Village Board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other public comments? If not, we'd be seeking a motion to close the public hearing and return to the regular business meeting. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Uh, questions. Uh, the public speaker just mentioned. Um, <laughs> About the sprinklers, so they've been deleted from this. Yes, we we aren't requiring residential sprinklers uh, as part of this. Correct. There still is with the commercial side. Um, th there is the standard that has been set with the uh, fire district that we still uh, work with them on, but uh, as far as residential permits, no. Okay, that, that's helpful. Uh, Ken, is there anything else in this document that uh, you think would be of concern to people? You've gone through it apparently. I, I'm not about to go through the entire <laughs> document trying to figure out what's been changed. Are there any <laughs> changes there that you, you have a concern about that you'd like to surface for us? There are a few changes with the uh, 2015 code that are addressing like the IJOYS. That's probably one of the bigger expenses of it, but we have very few contractors that use IJOYS on the first floor um, due to the fact that it's banned fire protection that's required elsewhere we're one of the last towns that are requiring it. and there's four options that they could go with if they are using eye choices which will decrease the cost for them depends on which way they go sprinklers for the basement are one or they could use drywall or they could use regular 2 by 10 2 by 12 material that eliminate the uh, need for any drywall or any other protection it's the biggest change in our code that would affect the builders and roughly on a um, 2,600 square foot house the cost would be roughly two thousand dollars 
if they would go with um, I Joyce's and you have to drywall. Okay, and if somebody, since there are four options, uh, if they, somebody wanted to go through those, you'd be happy to work with them to pick out the best option for them? Sure. Okay. Uh, my other comment has to do with the, uh, the fees. It looked to me like a lot of them, uh, a lot of the small ones, they're still pretty small. They may have recovered something, but none of them are at all excessive. And on top of that, uh, what you get for it is outlined there. A bunch of number of inspections or this or that. So I think the fees are well justified. I think uh, people are delivering a service. Uh, and we recognize that if we don't know they're doing it, they may not get the service that we're willing to provide by the inspections. So I think it's a fee structure looks very good to me. That was pretty much the goal that we were looking at was what we were charging. It, we were just to fill out the paperwork cost us more money. So uh, we, we still aren't looking at it as a money making venture by any stretch of the imagination. We really do want to encourage our residents to come in and actually get those permits because ultimately you do benefit by, by having them. Um, and, uh, and as uh, Ken pointed out, you know, the, these are just to, uh, we're just encouraging to a minimum standard where we aren't uh, uh, overzealous in, in many of the areas that uh, some other uh, roads can be. So um, it's a good thing for you to have. I like it. Support it. You know, Mr. Murphy, could you possibly, or Mr. Gosco, could you possibly uh, address this particular point? Uh, oftentimes people do not obtain a permit. Uh, assuming they're going to do the work on their own. Uh, are there implications in case of, uh, you know, for example, poorly installed electrical work that produces a fire and an insurance company, do they have the option of not uh, covering the damage? Um, I'm hearing that, I don't have it in for a fact, but I hear that that is an issue. If you don't have a permit on it, that it is a harder claim to make. Uh, there's been a couple of house fires in town that they did not have basement permits, their homeowner insurance will have upgrades to the houses after they do catch on fire and burn, and most of them are being covered under the policy. Okay. Uh, what we've seen in the past without getting permits, there's been many of uh, lending institutions that have been calling in the past, not so much within the last, say, six months, but in the past, and they'll question if there's a permit on the job, and if there isn't, Usually the loan does not go through. Okay. You know, just as a caution to anyone that is perhaps uh, uh, considering having work done in their home by themselves or someone who hypothetically might not be qualified, you know, it's for your own safety. I'm uh, just addressing the audience in particular. It's for your own safety to have it done, have it inspected. If you're paying someone to do it, have it done properly. You have a, a, a fa possibly a family that you have to protect or just your own property and yourself. So the, the permit process, as Mr. Murphy stated, it's not a money-making process. It's actually a safety-making process. And thank you. I just have a couple of questions. Have we ever talked about or discussed um, the radon mitigation issue with building and new building codes or construction? I know the only reason I ask, I'm not a, bu a builder or an engineer, but I just see when a lot of times it seems like when people move out is ultimately when they end up getting the radon tests and having to install it for the new owners moving in, where it seems like if they got it when they first built, they could get the benefits of that for the time that they're in the home. It started in the 2006 code, so we've been enforcing it since 2010. Prior to that, it was not a requirement. So a lot of builders do not go through effort putting it in. But today, it's part of our code. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. It's a passive system. It's not a uh, powered system. Um, the other question that I had was regarding, I guess it's non-permanent swimming pools. It seems like there's a lot of exceptions we have towards non-permanent, but yet it seems like a lot of the stuff that we put for the other, for the permanent above ground or in ground, is safety related. But yet, when you have a non-permanent, you still have some of the same safety issues. Do you have any thoughts on, on that topic or in that issue? Well, they still will require a fence around it. They still need the GFI, but they're not inspected per se. Okay. Uh, we do get calls on them, and that's when we will go out, or code enforcement will go out on them. Perfect. 
So there is a, still a requirement to have some kind of a structure and extension cords are not allowed type of thing for the... Correct. Okay. Any, any um, area where we hold over two feet of water would require a fence. If it's on the two feet, it does not. Perfect. Thank you. Um, one last one. I thought it said in there somewhere that we had a advertiser put this on public display for 30 days <coughs> prior to adopting. Is that correct? So it has has it been out there for 30 days? Yes, it was published in the paper of record and it has been noticed correctly. And last comment is just on page 60, uh, reinspection fee. I just think there's a couple of misspellings in there. It says $50, but it lists, and then in parentheses it says 60. It identifies 30, and then in parentheses it has 40. So it's just a little conflict between those those two at the top of page 60. Reinspection fee. See that where the parentheses don't match the spelling. I'm not sure which one is correct, but it's the higher of the two numbers. <laughs> Thank you. We'll consider those Scribner adjustments and make those uh, corrections. Thank you for catching those. Are there any other comments or questions from the board? No, I would be seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3249, amending chapter 2.5 of the municipal code. I make oh. a motion uh, for the board to consider the adoption of ordinance number 3249, amending chapter 2.5 of the municipal code. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Administrator's report? None tonight. Management services report? Good evening. Um, tonight I'm seeking consideration of a motion to authorize the purchase of laser fish forms and forms portal modules, uh, maintenance and training from TKB Associates at a total cost of $11,575. What these two modules are are an add-on to our existing document management software, which will allow us to take some of the forms that we have posted on the website, make them interactive, and then take the workflow behind them and have them route based on the content of the form to the appropriate department or person. We'll also put those into a, our permanent record storage um, for forms. And as you can see in the uh, packet, there's a good number of forms on our website that we can take these portal modules and make more efficient and gain some efficiencies for staff and also for the public. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, one question I have is the uh, amount of effort it's going to take to implement that. There are a lot of forms. I mean, it's one thing to get the software, but somebody's got to actually manipulate it to the point where it's useful. Right, and one of the good things about the software is it is geared towards the non-technical users to actually create you know, those forms. Um, so that's one of the things that I do like about the software. Um, we'll do some initial training with IT Any idea how long it'll take to uh, get this thing up and running as you envision? Uh, probably, we could probably have the first forms within uh, a month of implementation. Uh, okay, good. Sounds, it sounds to me like it's going to be easier for residents. Is that correct? For somebody that wants to go online and fill out stuff, they don't have to print it, fill right, it out. Right so now, if, even if we have a, a PDF form that's fillable, they still have to download it, fill it in, and then figure out who to email it to, who to send it to. With this portal software, They'll be able to fill it all online. Well, actually, the form can actually manipulate based on previous answers. So the answer to question two will drive the, answer, the choices for question three, et cetera. And then it'll route to our server. And the server, we can build a workflow. You know, if they answered this, they go to this department. If they answer this, they go to another department. So it'll eliminate the guesswork for the residents there. I think that's great. I just had uh, one question. So the, the cost of this, is any of that reoccurring, or is that strictly just to, to buy the software, or how does that work? Um, the items that are listed as LSAP or LSAP is the annual maintenance. So we're looking at a $1,730 annual maintenance. Thank you.
there any other comments or questions? Now we're seeking board consideration of a motion to purchase the laser fish forms and forms portal, portal modules, maintenance and training from TKB Associates at a total cost of $11,575. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Panucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. That's all I have. Thank you. Engineer's report? No report. To see me. Planning department report? Building Department report. No report. Public Works report. Thank you. I just have one item this evening. This is consistent with our budget discussions uh, from earlier this year, or I guess later last year, uh, actually looking forward. The uh, Plainfield Central High School is kind of a, in a unique situation um, where they did expand over time and that the majority of the campus was kind of confined in between Fort Beggs and James Street in that area. Over the years, they did acquire property and they constructed a parking lot south of Fort Beggs as well as some ball fields in that area. There is some sporadic street lighting in that area, but not consistent street lighting throughout the area. And the school district in the past has made the request for street lighting for this area. So we've included some funds uh, in the coming year's budget. We do have funds for engineering as well. This is the best time of the year to complete the engineering and go out for bids related to this project too as well. And um, the uh, engineering department has received three proposals. Christopher Burke provided uh, the lowest uh, proposal. They're a qualified firm. And this would include not only the design of the street lighting, uh, the bidding documents and assisting with assistance with bidding, and also the construction inspection during the construction. This would be the, the total amount. Now the type of street lighting that we envision for that area would be a decorative street lighting similar to what we have downtown along Fort Beggs in between Route 59 and River Road. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions, but we're recommending approval so we can move forward on this project. Just two quick questions. Any idea of the total cost and who will pay for it uh, when it's finally done? Yeah, uh, total cost we're estimating in the two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollar range. Um, and we are, uh, Mr. Murphy has reached out to the school district and we're seeking a partnership with the school district as soon as a tentative uh, understanding will be made, it'll be brought before the board. Okay, thank you. This is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. no, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just gonna make the, the statement that I'm obviously very familiar with this area and this is a very, very much needed um, lighting system that has to go in there that street is very dark um, and it's there's people crossing all the time and with trees and everything you really can't see very well in the early morning hours and the evening hours when it's winter time so this is this is very much needed and I hope the school district is going to partner with us on this so we do expect there to be that that partnership there in fact the, the conversation with the school superintendent and I have been has been <coughs> Uh, very good on that front. I also do want to point out that while it's not included in this proposal, um, we also are looking at additional um, street light improvements on 59 from Fort Beggs up to Union. There's some uh, lighting uh, uh, shortfalls in that particular area, but because that is an IDOT road, this, this behaves differently. So uh, I know that, that while we were exploring this, that was also an issue that was raised. So I wanted to be clear and point out that we have to treat them as two separate and distinct projects because of that. And I would just say too that <coughs> along 59, I've, although an IDOT, IDOT project, uh, a lot of those homes are only covered by two uh, ComEd poles right. from uh, in during that area. So it'd be much needed. Sorry, Alan, I just had one question regarding the, uh, the, the bid. Um, I think there was a photo metrics we were talked about as part of the initial engineering. Yes. Would that be included as part of this or was that somewhere else like, so when it, everything's finalized, somebody goes out there, I'm guessing it does kind of an as built with the photometric plan to make sure it met the original engineering design. Is that part of this or would that be part of the actual construction piece? The, the photo metrics would be, is included within this proposal and it is part of the design work. Um, I should add that uh, these will be LED lights as well. So they'll be energy saving fixtures, but all the photometrics and the calculations will be 
completed as part of the design. So that is included. There are no extra costs related to engineering related to this project. I mean, at the end, who would ultimately end up reviewing and making sure that it was built to, to design or to plan? Would that be this organization or the company that actually builds it? it? Typically, it is the engineering firm that oversees that that would verify that the photometrics meet uh, what was described in the standards. Uh, we also have the ability to do that evaluation as well. So uh, we would make sure that that would be covered. Would that be part of this bid or is that separate? part of this proposal. Thank you. All, all inclusive. Yes. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, we're seeking board consideration of a motion to authorize the village president to approve an engineering services agreement for the Fort Begg Streetlight Project with Christopher B. Burke Engineering for an amount not to exceed $17,600. So moved. Second. Motion's been made. And seconded. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Rasich? Yes. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have. Police Chief's report? I have no report. Thank you. Attorney's report? Uh, no report this evening. Thank you. Reminders? Uh, January 5th be our planning commission has been canceled. Uh, January 11th uh, be our next committee as a whole. Uh, January 13th will be coffee with the mayor. The 14th will be historic preservation. A commission meeting uh, January 18th our village offices will be closed and February 1st will be our next regular board meeting I'm sorry I just had one question the agenda was changed was there any reason or for that one item being pulled from the management services report uh, yeah there was a uh, there was actually a bid that came in late um, well after actually the documents were prepared and it uh, caused staff to want to review our a review. Thank you. We're seeking a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries.